Okay, so now we're going to pretend that these pads got trashed. Um, by pad, I mean that this exposed piece right here that is what the, uh, the, the part solders to, right? So this part that's silver right here that has solder presently on it, we'll pretend that got ripped off because that happens a lot. You don't get enough heat in on the whole part or um, two of them are heated and one's not and you're pulling hard enough, rips the other one off, right? That's not the end of the world. If you've got trace here, which is, you can see the darker green parts is where there's no uh, copper. That's just fiberglass under there, right? So this fiberglass board, fiberglass PCB with traces laid on it and then a green masking material put over that to uh, basically insulate it from stuff touching it. So if you do end up trashing these, we'll just, we'll just do one for now. Let's say this one got trashed, right? Let's say it's cut right here. We'll just put a little notch there. I'm not trashing anything. Basically, I'm just marking the masking, right? So a little bit of green got uh, scratched up there, but there's still plenty there to protect the, the, the surface of the trace, right? So if you, if you nick it, it's not terrible. It's when you start seeing copper, you might have an issue, but it's only if you start touching stuff to it. So if you take an X-Acto or a razor, really sharp knife, scrape for a while, this masking will start to come off and expose copper. So what we're doing here is we're making it so that we can make another connection. If, if our component isn't long enough, <clears throat> say like these are through hole, right? So the legs come through, usually you solder them and snip them to length. So if this is a really bad day for you, and say you tore the, tr the, the pad and a little bit of the trace off and putting the component back in doesn't give you really enough room to work and you need to make it longer, uh, you can do that. You can say, you know, move it back a bit. Uh, you know, say our only component only comes to here. We can make sure that this flows solder and then use a little chunk of jumper wire if needed. So, <clears throat> Best, you know, better case scenario, you've got a long enough component. Let me just grab a, like a resistor here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is going to be your normal through hole resistor. They come with long leads on them. So something like this. Pretty common part. Uh, a lot, very common on the cheaper board, stuff like this. These are all through hole components. So as you can see, they're all over this board. It's an older board, not a high dollar item. Not a big deal, no need for, I mean, you save money going with through hole, it's cheaper. So, let's say we were gonna, you know, put this in right, sorry, working through my camera again, right through here. So if we put this in all the way to where, say it would be, you know, have enough room on the board, like right, well, yeah, maybe a little higher, something like that, bend it through. We've got a lot of lead to work with. So, if we put it in the hole I'm actually working on, put it here, you've got a lot of room to say bend this thing around, right? So if you do need to do something where you add wire, uh, make it as short as possible. Uh, the longer it is, the more chance you have of it dancing around and bumping into stuff it's not supposed to and blowing stuff up, then your board's trashed anyway. So then you lose the whole amount of time you put in trying to fix it. So this is nice because then you can lay it down, you know, get it close. You can notch this off pretty easily with that exacto knife if need be also to length and then solder it down so that's a that's a, a good way to approach it without adding wire adding extra possibilities of a short down the line and trashing all the stuff you just worked to fix so i'm going to keep scraping this down a little bit i'm seeing copper i'm just going to make sure i'm good and I'm good and clean here so as you can see i'm, I'm exposing copper under the masking. Doesn't have to be as clean, but you want to make sure you got a good point for connection as far as trying to solder. So that's all done. So basically I'm going to take my iron, <clears throat> I'm going to hold it on the board. I might move it back and forth a tiny bit, but I'm not, I'm not putting really any pressure on this as I'm doing it. It's just kind of letting it rest and letting the heat go in it. The more pressure you use on stuff like this, the more prone it is to damage. So I'm going to tin my iron. So basically to tin your iron, you want to make it helps because it lets you know if it's hot. Like I said, I'm working through the camera, it's hard to line up. It's going to let you know it's hot and it's going to put a fresh coat of solder and expose some flux, make it easier for it to, for it to flow. So now I'm going to try to get this to where 
I'm just kind of resting my iron on it. So not putting on, not, I'm just, you know, holding it against, I'm not adding a lot of pressure or anything. I'm gonna start to feed solder, try to feed it in between the board and the iron. What's happening here is I'm heating up the board and, and uh, all the solder with it, but then the flux is helping to make it flow better too. So if I hold it for that long, the flux is activating, now I've got a solid connection on that board with the solder. So if now you, you, you know, you say, oh no, I've got all the solder, you can remove some of this. So the, the, the important thing is, is that you were able to make it flow. So we can even go and take this wick, clean all of that off if we wanted, and you're still going to see a silver tint to it from where the solder was, which is going to make it much easier to actually put more, you know, to solder a component to it. So, say we do that, clean it off, we've, you know, we've still got a nice silver pad there that's going to be very easy to put solder on, just like this. So now, we'll just, we'll just do it as an example. We'll take that resistor and we'll solder it into here. So, we take this, uh, put this uh, put this resistor through that center hole we're working on, just like that, and basically kind of, we'll just bend it a little bit just to simulate like, oh hey, it's supposed to go right there. So this is, you know, this is what it would pretty much line up at right there, give you a little bit of clearance, and then in theory it'd be over here another hole that this would go through on the other side. So now we've kind of got our length mapped out. I'm gonna try to hold this with my tweezers because I don't want to chop up my fingers, especially working through the camera. So now, bring this around, line it up. You can get kind of right towards the edge there. And I'm just going to kind of hold it with my X-Acto and wiggle it around with my, my uh, tweezers here. So that way I'm not trying to cut through the trace or anything, but I've got enough pressure. See, it didn't even, I mean, it bumped the masking a little bit, but didn't, didn't cut anything. Then we can line this up. Come over and bring this here. So now if I wanted, I can uh, get it a little more stable here. So the nice thing is if I had the other side hooked in, I could easily bend that into place and have it stay more easily. So, pretty close, right? So I'm going to use my tweezers. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little solder to my component just to, you know, make sure that's prime or primed, tinned is a better way to say that. Add a little bit there. I think I missed it. Like I said, hard to see through my camera. I apologize. So there, tinned it. So now, I've got that solder point on the board that I know is gonna gonna flow just fine so I'm gonna come from the other side and just kind of hold it in place here with my tweezers you don't want to try to hold this stuff with your hand it's gonna burn the hell out of your hand so now having issues apparently oh depth perception where are you ah oh, damn lost my part okay I'll drop this sucker back in Line it back in the hole. Maybe. Okay, get that component back in there. Line that up there. Bend that over in there. So, apologize. No depth perception with the camera either, so that makes it fun. Especially with all these other stuff, all this other stuff sticking up. So, alright. Try to make that a little bit easier. Wrap this other end around something to stabilize it. Apologize. Get in there. All right, close enough. So we're gonna take this. Oh, going through the hole again. All right, so I'll try that. Push that down there. There's our component. We've got solder on both ends. So I'm just gonna try to tack it at first, right? And then I'll add more solder. Um, actually, you know what? We'll just, we'll just use the solder to do this and then I'll hold it in place after we get it going a little bit. So, so here's our solder. Kinda line this up. I'm gonna 
grab the piece with the iron and hold it hold it down, get some heat into it. See it's dancing around a bit. So see that right there. So we got it to flow. It's a fair amount of solder there. I'm gonna realign it a little bit just because it's annoying me. And uh, get it to sit more flush on the board. So heat it up again. Kind of hold it with the tweezers. And you can see by how well that that little ball of solder is floating there, how well it flowed to that. So in your worst case scenario, longer leg, you're kind of following the trace, right? Because you don't want to bridge to your other other traces that are close to it. So we don't have any touching there. We don't have any touching there. Um, and it's only touching there and you could see it flowed really well. And with priming that surface first before we even try to solder it, that's what really helps. So, so there's that part and we might as well just, um, actually, no, that's good. So that's a worst case scenario. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps.